Welcome to Voodoo Whiskey Gaming and this is my late review of Oxenfree. Yes, it's a very late review because this came out last year. But that having been said, there wasn't really anything to play this week. So it was free for Xbox Live. So I went, why not? It sounded interesting. Which that having been said, it is currently free as of filming this video. When this goes up, the game will still be free. Okay, so the story goes, you are Alex, a young teenage girl who is on her way to a party on Edward's island with her best friend Ren and her new stepbrother Jonas. The only other two people who show up for this party are Clarissa, who unfortunately hates your guts, and Nona, who is more or less indifferent, but seems to like you well enough. Well, apparently there's a myth on this island. If you tune a radio into certain frequencies in front of a certain cave, some kind of spooky things happen, and well, you do that and spooky shit happens. This is one of those games where I love to use the phrase, this is where shit went wrong, and man, shit goes wrong. A whole bunch of weird stuff goes on, including like strange time loops, etc. Like weird possessions. It's kind of crazy. Hallucinations, all that jazz go down down and it's basically trying to get through the night, find your friends, and get off the island. One thing that's really impressive in this game is the characters and their interactions. I think that's truly one of the most important things in this game. While the mystery and all that jazz is cool and it's definitely important, obviously, I think one of the core elements is the characters themselves. Now, I will warn you, I don't consider this a spoiler and I'm not going to say the exact details of what goes down, but somebody might consider this a spoiler, so here is your warning, I guess. But I will say that that this game has a bunch of choices that you can make throughout the story and that's cool and all because they will affect the ending to an extent a little picture with what has happened who survived who's gone on like what they're doing now in life and then there's the true ending that comes afterwards and I've got to say I was loving it up until the true ending and it didn't surprise me in the least, but I did feel like it shit on the story. Honestly, it kind of ruined the entire story for me, which is disappointing because I was really, really enjoying it up to that point. This is definitely one of those situations where I've got to say the ending ruined the rest of the game for me. Like, retroactively, I beat the game and then I no longer enjoyed my overall experience the same way. So that having been said, let's go on to the audio. The audio in this game is actually surprisingly good. This is an indie title, so... With indie titles, the voiceover work can be garbage in this game. I thought it was actually really well done. I think the scripting was good. And when the scripting's good, it makes it easier for the voice actors to get into it, I feel. And it makes it more believable if they deliver it well. And they did. But not only that, I felt like the rest of the sound effects were actually really impressive. And since this is kind of a creepy mystery game, it's important to have good audio because, well, good audio helps creep you out more than just visual stuff. And this is a great example of that. When it's raining, it sounds like real rain. It sounds like real thunder. When you're at the beach, that sounds good. It sounds like you're actually at the beach. When you're in the forest, it sounds like the forest, etc. That's important. All the creepy sound effects are creepy and they add to it. So I will say that the audio is excellent in this game. So there is kind of a mystery, but it's kind of this pseudo, I guess it's one of those 2.5D games where you can kind of move forward and backwards, but it's mostly side to side. And it's really puzzled. There's not a lot of like platforming, so I'm not going to say that. There is a bit of it, but it's super easy and it's basically done for you. And by basically done for you, I mean it's done for you. You don't have to try and gauge jumps, you just make them. So it's really more about exploring and finding out the story. It's not quite interactive narrative. It's a little bit more interactive than that. There are some puzzles, etc., but everything is done to progress the story. As for the controls, the controls work very well in this game. I wouldn't say they're my favorite controls. Mostly, I guess it's because the character's not in an urgent state, although I would be in a bit more urgent state. They do seem to move a little slowly. Maybe it's just the size of the island that makes it feel like they're moving so slowly, but they do tend to move a bit slowly. But the controls are very simple and there are like choose your own dialogue options, which are just linked to buttons rather than fiddling with a joystick and then selecting. So you just press a button to choose what you want to say and it works every time. But be careful because sometimes the screen like inverts the image so it's upside down and you got to be pay attention to the 
colors rather than like the positioning for what you're gonna say. It matters because you could hit the wrong thing by accident very easily. But that's not the controls fault. It's a game thing. It's meant to be that way. It's a mechanic. Then lastly, there's the graphics. It's an interesting looking game. It has its own very unique art style. It looks very kind of paper cutout-ish on like a giant paper awesome background that's all been like hand painted and hand colored and hand drawn and I really like it. That having been said, you don't get to see a lot of detail in the characters because the camera is pretty far away from them at all times. So that's kind of a bummer to me. The only time you actually see the detail in the characters is when they like get together and take a photograph of something which they generally end up taking a selfie and a group of them are in it and then you get to see some detail in them. So I do wish I could see a bit more detail throughout the game but overall I really enjoyed the art style of this game. I liked the way it looked and I think it was an interesting way of going about a game like this and it added something to the overall experience. Okay so this isn't a super long review so let's just go on to I guess the wrap up. And at the end of the day I want to recommend this game I really wish I could but the ending like I said, it ruined the story for me, which is too bad because the rest of it is so well done and so enjoyable. I like the mechanics. I like the audio. I like the graphics. I loved the story up until that ending. So that having been said, if you have to pay for this, I would personally skip it. I'm glad I didn't have to pay for it. I'm glad it was free through Xbox. So if you do have to pay for it, skip it. If you have an Xbox Live Gold membership, get it right now. Play it for free. You'll understand what I'm saying. You might disagree with me, but that's where I stood on the ending and the game overall. Okay, so in the comments below, why don't you tell me if you actually played Oxenfree already? Because, well, it's actually a fairly old game. And as always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button. And if you like what I'm doing in general, share, subscribe. Have a good one.